as well. This is moving towards places like Stewartville, kind of following just south of 14 and now heading a little bit further on down 52. So Blooming Prairie will run into a little rain as well. So that's one thing I've got my eyes on. The other thing is the heat. Mason City, now 90 degrees, 70 degree dew points added in, and that's where you get real feels or the heat index value of over 100. It feels like 101 degrees right now in Mason City, even warmer where we have this dark red spot which is where we find a heat advisory. So it's not just the heat advisory that I'm keeping an eye on. We've got flood warnings, flood watches, and a threat for severe weather. Jess, a lot going on. I've got more details here in the next few minutes. Thank you, Sarah. Governor Tim Walz is working to assist some of the more than 40 Minnesota counties impacted by flooding. During a press conference this morning, the governor announced the National Guard is responding to the southern part of the state and seven counties are applying for federal disaster relief. The governor says the state has more than $26 million earmarked for that purpose, with funds increasing to $50 million in September. An emergency management team has already deployed to Jackson County, and 46 National Guard soldiers are in Waterville to support operations and man pump stations to alleviate flooding. During today's announcement, Walls praised the community and first responders for working together to prevent the situation from escalating. These are folks that are, in many cases, have their homes threatened, but they're out there helping their neighbors. They're out there using their training. And at this point in time, and we want to keep it this way, that we've had no serious injuries and certainly no deaths involved in this very widespread um, event. The Minnesota National Guard says it provides essential resources such as high water vehicles, helicopter support and engineering assets in response to flood emergencies. The director of Homeland Security and Emergency Management is asking community members in high water areas to stay out of flood waters due to possible contamination. Evacuation efforts are underway after the Rapidan Dam failed this morning in Lesueur County. Homeowners in low-lying areas of the Minnesota River Valley are being asked to leave. It's located about 10 miles southwest of Mankato. You can take a look at this video of the dam right here shot earlier this afternoon. The Blue Earth County Sheriff's Office says debris started piling up near the 114-year-old structure yesterday. Then at 10.36 this morning, dam operators discovered the river had eroded the west side of the dam. We're learning the county road 33 and 90 bridges are being monitored and may close to drivers. The Mississippi River is also rapidly rising raising concerns among residents in Wabasha. The National Weather Service is reporting water levels around 13 feet in that area. KIMT News 3's Maureen Dudley shares reactions from boaters and businesses. I'm here right by the Mississippi River where the water level is still pretty high and there's debris floating around. I spoke with residents about how they feel about the flooding and the river level. In Wabasha, excess water is preventing fishermen from taking their boats out onto the rising river. I don't like it because I can't go fishing. <laughs> um, a lot of the boats can't get out there because it's so much debris and stuff out there. Well, it's definitely higher than normal, so we have a boat. And we haven't been able to really get it out lately because everywhere we would put it in is underwater as far as the boat ramps go. So. Not just boaters, but businesses like Slipperies are concerned about flooding risks. A server at the restaurant, Malaya Johnson, says since it's located right on the river, she's worried about damage from rising water. We're hoping that we don't have to close. Hopefully it doesn't get any more higher than it is. Johnson says given the high water level, customers aren't being allowed to use the dock to access the river by boat. In Wabasha, Maureen Dudley, KIMT News 3. The record water level for the Mississippi River in Wabasha is 20 feet. That was reached back in 1965. Turning our focus from floods to fighting fires. As volunteer departments remain male-dominated across Minnesota, work is underway to encourage female applicants. According to the National Fire Prevention Association in 2020, only 9% of firefighters in the country were women. At the Rushford Fire Department, in the past six months, two female firefighters have been onboarded. Fire Chief Chad Rasmussen says both new recruits took an interest after being in law enforcement and EMT fields previously. The department has some advice for anyone looking to apply. Just give it a try and it might be hard, but you get you figure out other ways to do stuff that guys do. There's really nothing that um, 
on a fire department, there's nothing that a female can't do that a male can do. Um, there's jobs out there for everybody. Uh, there's, there's nothing that they can't do. We like to hear that. The Rushford Fire Department says anyone looking to join should speak with their own local fire department. We're looking ahead now to the Rochester Police Department's second Safe City Nights of the Summer. The event is kicking off at 6 p.m. Tuesday at Franklin Elementary School. Activities for kids include a demonstration by the K-9 team and RFD fire crews, along with a scavenger hunt. Everything is scheduled to wrap up at 8. The next Safe City Nights will be taking place at Jefferson Elementary on Tuesday, July 9th. That will be at the same times. RPD launched the event series back in 2019 to better connect with the community. Looking ahead to later this week, Olmstead County is reminding voters absentee ballots can be filled out starting on Friday. That's for Minnesota's primary election, which is a little bit further off on August 13th. There are several ways to make your voice heard early. You can vote by mail and in person at the Olmstead County Elections Office. As a reminder, your ballot must be received by 8 p.m. on Election Day to count. Doubt it. it, Thank it you, that's, huh? that's my comfort zone. A NBA champion is returning to Minnesota to help his hometown rebound. How De Devine George is open to use his underdog mentality to boost the economy in North Minneapolis. Plus, rising rivers in Rice County are prompting a rapid response. We've got a look at water levels never before seen by the community and how homeowners are working to fight back the flood. We're building him a safe haven in his backyard. And later, personalizing play for a little boy battling cancer in Iowa. How a group of volunteers is granting his wish in Urbandale. KIMT News 3 at 5. Your most watched local news with KIMT News 3's Jessica Bringy. Tracking storms with Storm Team 3 meteorologist Sarah Knox. This is KIMT News 3. More local news that is happening right now. We are coverage you can count on. A hard lesson learned on the hardwood. Progress takes patience. Now a three-time NBA champion from Minnesota is returning home to help North Minneapolis rebound. 
Fevian George is a former pro who played for Augsburg University in Minneapolis. He then suited up for the Dallas Mavericks, Golden State Warriors, and Los Angeles Lakers. Now he's leading an effort to open a modular manufacturing plant in the heart of North Minneapolis, his hometown. The 82,000 square foot building will soon begin manufacturing new apartments, hotels, and other forms of multifamily housing in pieces. Those pieces will then be sent to building sites to connect and stack like blocks. George is hoping his financial leap will help boost the economy. My mindset was different than everybody else. Everybody else fell to the wayside. Everybody else had mental fatigue. I was always to stay locked in. You have to fight and be an opportunity. You have to fight owning your own business. All of it is on you. The no's all come to you. The issues all come to you. The facility, now called George Modular Solutions, will primarily use steel, not wood. The company plans to hire around 160 employees and start delivering modular units by the first quarter of next year. Because I'm just devastated over what has happened. Sandbagging efforts keep hope afloat even as Rice County communities take on water. How homeowners in some of these smallest cities are making a big difference for their neighbors. Sarah. Thank you, Jess. And although we are seeing a little bit of rain right now, the big question, could that impact our severe threat as we get later into tonight? I've got an answer and a look at where those storms are currently, where they will be later tonight, and everything in between. We track storms to alert you first. This is KIMT Storm Team 3. Weather coverage you can count on. Welcome back to KIMT News 3 at 5. Ahead of our forecast, we're getting a bird's eye view from our KIMT News 3 drone. This is over Charles City and Osage. It's a look at the Main Street Bridge in Charles City. It's been closed by rising water on the Cedar River. In Osage, you can look at some of the fields 
This is all flooding due to that recent rain. Obviously very saturated there. Storm Team 3 meteorologist Sarah Knox is keeping an eye on all of the current conditions. So we're seeing some flooding or rain rather here in Rochester and obviously behind you we're seeing some of those rising water levels in Charles City. Yeah, and I'm happy to report that over really just the last half an hour, hour that we continue to see the rising rivers become more receding rivers going back into their banks. Still, the Cedar River at Charles City does remain in current floods or major flood stage at around 20.81 feet the last time I checked, which was about 15 minutes ago. And meanwhile, the forecast does have some good news. It will be falling back to moderate flood stage. So again, once it's it a little bit sm smaller in its banks, they're getting packed closer and closer to normal. That comes early tomorrow morning. A lot of the standing water that you're seeing here was from earlier when it was out of its banks, but we can clearly see it has receded. We're actually seeing some of the cement there, the tree trunks. All right, so some good news there, but the problem is we still see threats for rain across the area in places that are already super saturated. Right now we are seeing some storms roll through and it tells you how supercharged the atmosphere has been throughout the day as a warm front continues to push warmth and humidity into the area. I'm going to start talking about this. It has lost a little bit of energy here just south of Dodge Center. So some good news kind of starting to small up here. <laughs> Pardon me. And I'm more so concerned about this area here, that pink. I was looking earlier as it was going over the southwest portion of Rochester, had that potential to bring some small hail. That potential is still there. However, I like to see that the gray is getting smaller and smaller as it passes through Marion. So that's just a look at that current hail threat, the current shower and storm threat. The problem is that as we get into tonight, we see another threat for even more strong, severe storms. That is prompted the National Weather Service to put all of our southern Minnesota counties back in a flood watch going into effect at 7 p.m. And really what we're watching for here is the potential for flash flooding in localized areas because these are going to be fast moving, powerful storms. Now, as for all of the light green, that are that's continuous flood warnings that we've been seeing on multiple rivers. Okay, we're gonna zoom things out now here. This is the surface map showing that warm front I mentioned that continues to pump in more of the warmth, more of the humidity into the area, which brings that severe threat as the center of the low pressure system begins to pass over with the accompanying cold front. It's also kept things very warm as some of our counties are under a heat advisory. That includes Hancock, Winnebago County, even Mason City, though. Cerro Gordo County, not under that advisory, but certainly showing off the heat. 90 degrees currently, but with 70 degree dew points, it feels like 101 out there. It gets even warmer as you go towards Algona, where temperatures are currently in the low 90s. Whew. All right, so that's the heat. That's the current threat when it comes to the storms, the hail. Let's fast forward time here on Sky Tracker 3. This is around midnight. This is the main concern when it comes to our severe threat. Going to see that bow echo shape that it makes. Yes, looking to impact Wisconsin, but has the ability to move even further on into southern Minnesota. That is where we find a level 3 enhanced risk for severe development. All right, moving on to the seven day forecast now. The weekend is always in view. And luckily, Jess, we will start to dry out and cool off by the time we get into the midweek, something we need before another round of rain comes Friday. Absolutely. Thank you, Sarah. While staying with severe weather in southern Minnesota, rapidly rising rivers in Rice County have homeowners in small communities like Faribault racing to stem the flood. The Board of Commissioners is declaring a state of emergency in Rice County. Right now, Public Works buildings in Morristown and Faribault are offering sandbags to community members. The Channel End in Warsaw helped organize an event this weekend where volunteers filled nearly 3,000 sandbags. For contacts, the town's population is just under 800. Ahead of the July 4th weekend, campers and homeowners say it's flooding like they've never seen. But so is the community's response. Yes, I have the best group of campers ever, and they are more supportive than I could be for them hardly today because I'm just devastated over what has happened to them. We just want to express that. Our hearts it's go out to the Faribault right community. Down. Yeah, Waterville, Very sad. Morristown, Warsaw, it's, it's um, pretty widespread. Sad, but yeah. we'll get through it. Oh, yeah. We always do. The Sheriff's Office and Emergency Management crews are reminding everyone to stay out of floodwaters once again. 
Also, watch out for road closures. Today, community members can drop off flood contaminated materials at Rice County's Solid Waste Facility. A Virginia nonprofit helps make a child's dream a reality in Iowa. How the efforts of volunteers are changing the life of a young patient in Urbandale battling leukemia. Dangerous flooding continues to impact millions in parts of the Midwest. At least one death has already been reported in South Dakota due to the flood waters. Evacuations have also been ordered in parts of Iowa. Jonah Kaplan reports from Spencer. Historic rainfall is causing rivers to swell in parts of the Midwest. I think the term people are using is unprecedented. In Minnesota, Governor Tim Walz activating the National Guard to help residents in Waterville, while officials kept a close eye on possible dam breaches in low-lying areas. Minnesotans are tough and our communities are strong and we will get through this together. Aerial video shows the extent of devastation in Iowa where Governor Kim Reynolds declared a disaster for 21 counties. At this time, it's estimated that uh, at least 1,900 properties are impacted and hundreds have been destroyed. In the town of Spencer, streets have turned into rivers, leaving residents with nowhere to go. All this water is from a historic crest from this river that's moved well beyond the bridge. You can see it's covered this entire stretch. Many businesses, there are neighbors on each side. And in South Dakota, at least one person was killed after heavy rains and flooding inundated the eastern part of the state. And floodwaters there continue to pose a threat. Officials in affected areas are working with the federal government to deliver assistance to hard-hit areas as the severe weather threat shifts east. The severe weather also spawned tornadoes that struck southern Wisconsin over the weekend. A personalized playground project is a dream come true for a central Iowa boy. In Irvindale, his wish has been granted thanks to a Virginia-based nonprofit. Meet Ezra Tennyson. 
Earlier this year, he entered remission for leukemia after receiving the diagnosis in September. Big congrats to him and his family. Now, he has a new playground in his own backyard thanks to the Rock Solid Foundation. The organization, based in Virginia, partnered with TMC Transportation in Iowa to make the project possible. On Saturday, volunteers built the structure in secret while Ezra played in the front of the house. Then the groups surprised the boy in the backyard with his new playground. His parents and volunteers say this experience has been a chance to bring a piece of childhood home, even as Ezra continues to receive chemo for the next 18 months. So we're giving him, we're giving him a spot in his backyard where he can do what a boy is supposed to do, play. He's been very resilient with it. He, uh, and most times he has a great attitude about it too. The Rock Solid Foundation says it's built a few hundred play sets every year for the last 15. The group says Ezra's playset was the first one it's ever constructed in Iowa. Sarah. Thank you so much, Jess. You see those darker clouds behind the skyline in Rochester? some showers and storms moving through the area as we speak. Not the severe ones that we're tracking for later tonight. And we've got plenty other hazards to keep, pardon me, to keep an eye on. I will let you know what's coming our way. Plus, there may not be much on the docket today at Rochester Fest, but the future's a flurry of family fun. We're taking a peek at what's happening tomorrow at Soldiers Field Park. It's day three of Rochester Fest, and while tonight's event slate is empty, tomorrow there will be plenty for the whole family to do. Tuesday is Unity Day at Soldiers Field Park. Organizers say tomorrow's activities celebrate diversity and togetherness. At noon, Rochester Mayor Kim Norton will be welcoming visitors at a festival opening ceremony. Then at six, a celebrity sherbet eating contest will be taken over Soldiers Field. If you'd like to improve your dancing skills, salsa lessons will be running from 6 to 8. Finally, the Twin Cities Music Orchestra Salsa de Sol will be performing from 7.30 until 9. 